What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch. It's great to have you back. Now, as soon as I dropped that video on Momentum Custom Firmware for the Flipper Zero, the first question everybody started asking me was, how do you use the Find My Flipper app? Now, for those of you who don't know what the Find My Flipper app is, is basically it turns your flipper into an AirTag or a Samsung tag, or in the latest dev release of Momentum, a Tile Tag. Is that what they're called? Tile Tags? I don't know. Now, when I first started working on this video yesterday, I was trying to do this the entirely free way. So I was generating my own keys and then using Docker with a project called Open Haystack to be able to track everything without the need for Apple or Samsung or any of those guys. I mean, you guys know me, I'm really not an iOS fan, so I really wanted to try to do this without having to use Apple products. Turns out, you know what I like even less than Apple products? Docker. One of these days, I'll get Docker working well, but for now, guess what? We're stuck with this and this. But good news, it's actually super, super simple to do it, assuming that you have access to both an iPhone and an Android phone, but I feel like most people have that nowadays. So yeah, let's not mess around too much. Time to turn this into this. So grab yourself a cup of on-call coffee and let's get at it. All right, so step one is actually getting the app. If you have Momentum Firmware, you've already got the app. And if you actually get the dev version of the firmware, which you can flash from the web flasher, you can get uh, tile support too, which is pretty cool. Also, if you happen to be in the Momentum Custom Firmware Discord, I am Yapper. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Also, if you are using Momentum Firmware, hop on down to their GitHub and give them a star. They've earned it. If you're on official firmware and you want the app, you can simply install it from either mobile or on lab.flipper.net over in apps. It could not be easier. But for now, let's hop on over to Matthew Kukanich's GitHub. We'll call him Matthew K because my pronunciation is terrible and take a look. All right, here we are on Matthew K's GitHub. Give this guy a star, this is such a cool project. Now, if you guys wanna mess around with open haystack and try to figure out exactly how to make this all work, here's option B. This method is what I was trying to get through. Unfortunately, I was not able to make it work and it was kind of complicated. It would have been a pretty hard video to make it all work. But luckily, right after I finished filming this, Matthew K actually made his own open haystack tutorial. Check it out, link down below. For now, we're just gonna be doing it what I'm gonna call the easy way. I'll show you the easiest way I figured out how to do this, but one thing I did want to show you is that if you go into releases down here they actually have the applications for all of the different firmware so you know if you're on unleashed extreme you can use those from here again i'm in the latest dev version of momentum so i've already got the latest and greatest all right so i'm just going to go ahead and grab my iphone and load up the find my app all right, so you can see on the screen, I've got the Find My app running and you can see Flip Squatch, which is my actual AirTag right here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually just click on Flip Squatch. We scroll down, you'll notice Lost Mode. We're gonna click Enable on that. And then we're gonna go to Continue and then enter an email address. I'm gonna use an email address. We're gonna do this. None of this matters, but uh, I guess it really matters. The at the.com. next and then activate now we're in lost mode so as soon as we have that going we're just going to go ahead and power the phone down so that it stays in lost mode all right so now that we're in lost mode all we're going to do is power the phone off entirely so that it's off and then the air tag is going to be in lost mode it takes a couple minutes for it to really register that it's in lost mode and what it's going to do when it is in lost mode i know i'm saying that a lot is it's going to start pinging locations super super important all right so my understanding at least is when the air tag is in close proximity to the phone that it was paired with basically it turns into a connected mode while we're in connected mode basically it just stops pinging as often and it's not doing the i'm lost command which is what we really need to make this whole thing work so there are two ways to get it into that lost mode, one of which is doing it with the phone we just did. Another one is isolating the AirTag from the phone. You can do it by moving the phone really far away from the AirTag, wrapping it in foil. This is not a hat crunchy. Or you can take the iPhone and put it into a microwave as somebody suggested. I probably wouldn't do that, but it works. All right, so now that the AirTag is in lost mode, we're gonna go ahead and grab our Android phone and download an app called NRF Connect. It's directly on the App Store. I don't need to show you how to install apps. You know what you're doing, I hope. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and open up the NRF Connect and immediately I'm just gonna stop scanning because you can see all this crap shows up already. There are a ton, a ton of Bluetooth devices. They're gonna be found all over the place. So what we're gonna wanna do is set some very basic filters. So basically we're gonna go to, um, let's see, exclude. Let's go on the little three bar right there. Everything but Apple. So we don't need to see any of this stuff. And then let's set the RSSI 
all the way down to like 50. Here's 40. That'll work. Make sure we're close to the air tag. And there we go. That is it right here. We're going to tap on it once. So interestingly enough, if you click raw, this has enough information right here for you to do this manually. So you can enter these numbers and this is the payload right here. And then the um, MAC address is right there. So we can just open up the Find My Flipper app and enter this stuff manually. That sucks. You don't want to do that. So we're going to do it a little easier here. If we click OK and go to More, we can click the three ellipses of the hamburger, go to Save, and Save to File. So this is going to save. I've got it set up on my drive to save. Hit that Save right there. All right, done. Basically, we're all set here. So I saved that file to my Google Drive so I can get it to my computer. The goal is to get that file onto the flipper. So you can email it, you can do whatever you want, text message, I don't care. But basically you need the text file that we just saved from NRF Connect onto the flipper. Also super important, as soon as you capture that file, we're gonna wanna take the battery out, hold the base, twist this little guy, and then the bat, whoop, whoop, see, battery comes right out. Didn't even drop it. From here on out, that battery stays out of the AirTag because basically it will overwrite the flipper if you plug it all back in. So sorry, AirTag, your days are done. And don't try to be cheeky. Remember, if you plug that back in, it's still in lost mode, which means A, it cannot be paired to another phone, and B, if another iPhone sees it, it's just gonna overwrite the flipper, so you'll have to start the entire process over again if you still have it. So, don't do it. All right, so let's hop on down to the desktop and take a look at that file we just got. Alrighty, so here's our file. Let's open up Notepad. We'll notice a few things real quick, so let's pop this around here. First of all, right up here, that is my Mac address. Willie actually worked with Matthew K on this app so that it actually is gonna pull the Mac address right from here. And then this here, from here on, is actually the payload number. This you can manually add to the flipper through the Find My app, but that's a lot of characters. I, I actually did this. It took me, I think, three tries. I'm ashamed to admit to get this right. I'm uh, just transcribing it. So that's why we wanna do it this way. It's so much easier. So as long as you have this text file, we're gonna make life so much simpler. So we can go ahead and close Notepad and then plug our flipper into our computer and then load up QFlipper. Do, do, do. Now I've got the latest dev version of Momentum and you can see, actually I forgot to mention Curanons is actually the artist that made the assets for this. And one of the cool assets that he added since the dev build is this amazing little profile picture. I love it and it's got the Yapper Capybara. Did I mention that I'm Yapper? Cause I am Yapper. Nobody can convince me otherwise. You do have the, have the latest dev version and then select the Momentum asset pack, but it's a super cool. And then check it out. When we go back to the home screen, back, Let's see, do, do. here we go. We have the Yapper animation. It's so cute, Kiernan, you're a legend. All right, enough uh, gushing about animations. Let's go back into our SD card, open that up. We're gonna go to apps data, and then we're gonna go to find my. All you gotta do is take this file, drop it into find my, and then we can just import it so we don't have to enter in all those characters. Okay, so now we go back into the actual flipper. Press the middle button, we're gonna go to apps, we're gonna go to Bluetooth, and then we're gonna go down to find my flipper. Come and do, there we go. Perfect. So one thing to notice, actually, if you press up and down, it actually changes the ping interval. This can help if you're concerned about it using a lot of battery running in the background, because you can run it in the background. If you press left, it'll run in the background. And from what I have heard, it really uses almost no battery. So if you want to use this as an air tag, it's a great way to do it. And you don't really have to worry about battery life. So what we're going to do from here is press the right arrow. And this is just going to open up the settings menu. So you can again, change the interval. You can change the power. This is set on max maximum power because again what I've been told is that this really doesn't use a ton of battery so what we want to do is go to register tag right here we're going to choose Apple air tag because that's what we used and we're going to use NRF connect because that's the app we used and it uses the text file again if you wanted to you could just register the tag manually but then you got to enter in the all this stuff it takes way too long I hate that this is why I'm showing you the easy way because if we go to NRF connect you can see here we go this is my tag text click that import it and it's done literally it's done we don't have to do anything else super cool so what i'm going to do for now is actually i'm going to turn my iphone back on and then let's pull up the screen record of that and you can see exactly what happens when we fire this up all right so here we are back in the find my app and you can see down here that it says that last seen 23 minutes ago because that's about how long it took me to film this part to get to here all right and due to technical issues it's 25 minutes ago no worries but you'll see if we go to broadcast so we're going to go ahead and click the broadcast button 
button, the middle button on the flipper, find my flipper app, you'll see that this should pop up in a second. So it'll show that it's back intact. Hey, there it is. So yeah, it's actually, now it's tracking my flipper. Actually, I can unplug it from the computer. Well, no, I'm still on Q-Flipper, but yeah, it's right here. You can barely see it, but yeah, it's actually tracking my flipper and not the AirTag, because again, there ain't no battery in it. Now, one thing I did notice is that it seems to take a little while for the phone to recognize the flipper as an AirTag. So just be patient. It shouldn't take that long, but like it took like a minute or so for it to pop up. So, you know, be patient. What is nice is if it didn't work, like somehow it changed the MAC address or the payload's wrong, you can always do it over again. It's actually super simple. I've done this like 10 times now just to try to get the entire process as smooth as I could. Now, I did talk to Matthew K about the potential of doing this all on the flipper, and it sounds like it's potentially possible with something like an ESP32 S3, but we're not quite there yet. I do know he was also mentioning the possibility of potentially making an app that can generate tile tags and doing it from there all in the flipper. But again, that's for the future. The fact that this program works at all right now is actually super cool. I know people have been messing around with uh, air tags and flippers for a a long time now, but now it's finally pretty practical. All right, so I hope that was pretty easy to follow. It was a little tricky figuring it all out, but honestly, it's a pretty simple thing to do. This is such a cool app. Major, major prop to Matthew K for making this thing happen. Are there any other apps that you guys want me to cover? Leave them down below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Less than half of you guys are subscribed, so just clicking on that little button takes two seconds, but it helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.